Have you ever wondered how to make a beautiful waterfall aquarium before? In this video, I'm going to show you everything that you need to know. The first step is painting a black background on it. This will work as an excellent base to build on. I find it takes about five to seven coats of paint to stop all light getting through. Next I use a 100% aquarium safe silicone that has no added chemicals to start securing the background. Once the background is in place, I tape up the aquarium and use the same silicone to create a watertight seal for the filter compartment. I then smooth it out to seal any possible gaps as well as creating a nice bead along the aquarium edge. After that, I turn it on its back and build the hardscape, making sure to keep all of the natural lines of the stone in line with each other. Then I use the black expanding foam to fill any gaps as well as secure the hardscape in place. Next, using the expanding foam, I secure smaller broken pieces of the dragon stone for the overflow compartment. Next, I apply a generous layer of silicone covered by a thick amount of tree fern fibers to simulate a dirt area in the aquarium. My goal in doing this is to cover all of the areas of the background that don't have stone as well as some of the parts of foam that won't be in constant contact with the water. Next, I start adding in the Pacific wood, trying to create as many areas as possible for plants. It also adds another layer of detail, as well as a sense of realism into the aquarium. I then go through and secure all of the pieces of wood using cyanoacrylate superglue, as well as more silicone. I then do a test fill, and while doing this, I try to pour the water over all of the hardscape to clean any remaining debris. Adding in the pump and seeing the waterfall working for the first time was very exciting. After emptying the aquarium and letting it dry, I then start adding in nutrients to the base layer of the substrate. I then follow it up with some ordinary aquarium gravel, making sure to work it into all of the nooks and crannies beneath the background. I cap all of that off with a coarse grain aquarium sand that will also provide some pretty nice contrast. I add in one last piece of dragonstone for detail, as well as to create a nice area for planting. I 
After smoothing out the base area, I then add gravel and nutrients for the terrestrial plants. I then use more of the aquarium gravel as well as a dark sand to create a more natural look in the foreground of the aquarium. I then start adding plants into the land area. These are amazing because they will suck almost all of the nutrients out of the water as it passes over. For the terrestrial plants, I use Syngonium potophyllum mini pixie, Vitonia alba venus mini red, some miscellaneous bucephalandras, as well as java fern petite. I also put a jewel orchid cutting in, hoping it'll grow some roots. Moving on to the aquatic section, the first plant I added was Anubias golden coin. Next I add some needle leaf java fern that I glued to a small stone. I then glue in a few pieces of Anubius Congensis Mini. I also take advantage of some of the placement using the glue to secure the dragon stone onto the wood. The next plant I'm adding in is Anubius Nana Petite. I try to keep all of these in bunches together where I think that they look best. I also tried to keep all of the Anubius Petite down low so it looks like little bushes growing from the roots. The next plan I add in are different pieces of Bucephalandra. For this one, I try to keep the planting very dense as well, and tried to keep it along all of the pieces of wood. Once all of these pieces are grown in, they will have amazing little pops of color as well as texture. After getting the moss added into the overflow compartment, I then get the aquarium moved into my living room. It's not completely planted, but I knew I had enough in there to start the process. Once I had all of the new plants, I started draining the aquarium and cleaning off the glass. Then I got to work planting, starting with Java Fern Narrow Mini that I also glued on small stones. I added in some more Nubius at the water's surface to cover up some of the exposed foam as well. I also added more under the wood. I added in some Java Fern Trident Mini into an empty corner in the back, following it up with more Java Fern Narrow Mini. Finally, a few more pieces of Buse spread around through the aquarium, because really, you can never have enough.
After the planting was finished, I then filled up the aquarium, making sure to go slowly this time so I did not disturb the substrate. After a few more days, I decided that the terrestrial area could use some more plants, so I added some more Anubius Condensus Mini with its roots bundled in sphagnum moss so it stays nice and moist. I also pulled out all of the Fetonia and replaced it with some standard Java fruit. I mist the Anubias regularly to ensure they don't dry out in their new environment as they acclimate. For the first livestock, I add in a handful of ramshorn snails and a single nerite snail. After two weeks had passed, I got some fish and began acclimating them into their new home. I let them sit for about half an hour with the lights off before straining the water and adding them into their new home. I also upgraded the lights from the string lights to the Twin Star 200C, securing it in place with loops of silicone. And here we are. The light looks amazing, the fish are happy, the waterfall is running beautifully, and the plants are beginning to grow. Please do like, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one.